YouTube, what's up, what's happening? Here I am bringing you another video. I know it's been a while, had a baby and all. So uh, yeah, anyway, today, by the name of the title, you probably can already tell, I'm gonna take you guys into some shading techniques to show you guys and get started uh, in those beautiful color blends that you see um, us airbrush artists do all the time, you know, whether we're doing a portrait or whether we're doing a t-shirt and something, you know, we just make it all smooth and stuff. So I'm going to give you guys a quick little set of pointers and walk you guys through, you know, the basics of how it is to get into shading. So for today's exercise, um, of course, you're always going to need your paper towels like always, your airbrush. Uh, you're going to need at least two colors of paint today. So we're working with a light color and a dark color. So if you're going to do black, you know, you're going to need gray. So if you have a dark blue, you're going to need a light blue, a red, you're going to need a light red or a pink, um, and so on and so forth. And that's just uh, to, again, create a blend and to run through these exercises, you will need two colors. And as always, you know, a shirt board, your airbrush, and you're pretty much good to go. So we're going to have a couple exercises for you today. Um, first one is pretty basic. And the second one is, you know, you could actually master it. So this first little exercise, all you got to do is we're going to stick our paper towels on here using our uh, spray adhesive and then we'll go from there. Voila. So now we have it on there and I'm um, going to run you a quick exercise. So you're going to need your first, your lighter set of your colors. Again, I'm going to be using black and gray, but you know, you could use whatever color set you want. Um, so I will load up the gray first and there I have my gray. So <clears throat> what we're going to try to do here is you want to give yourself a couple areas to work with. Uh, you know, I've loaded two sheets on here. That's pretty much a good way to go about it. Uh, so we're going to do one little quick exercise here and one little quick exercise here. And then I will take you to the more advanced exercise. So this first little exercise is uh, pretty much just trying to lay out an area of gradients and uh, by gradients I mean going from light or dark to light we're gonna do today and um, without there being any banding and by banding I mean like spots where you could clearly tell the difference between dark and light areas we want it to be smooth across and not have you know definite areas where you could tell that you switched the color so to start off we're gonna start off with a really thick or not thick but really on there gray and then we're gonna blend off to this side and uh, basically the best tip I could get for, give for blending is as you're going along to your side is to slow or slowly um, or at the rhythm that you're moving with really uh, let go of the trigger as you pull away and fan the brush out so if I'm here I will brush it out this way if I was to go that way I would be pulling it out and brushing this way and what that does is kind of spreads the paint out and kind of lets it kind of flow off but without you know spraying too much and you also don't want to have a definite stop between your light color and your white so you don't want it to just you know cut it off right there you want it to just kind of flow off and a little bit overspray just to land on the side just to give you that extra you know smoothness so here we go And as you can see, I'm doing multiple lines going up. And again, you got to give yourself a little bit of space in between these so you don't bunch them up and don't lay it too dark. But as you can see, it is going from a dark to a light and there is no kind of difference. You know, there is no clear indicator of where this goes from light to dark in this. So <clears throat> you want to keep that up and, you know, give yourself a good four inches and that's pretty much it right there and so we're gonna come back in with our second color and just again do the same thing but with your second color you're gonna fan in almost immediately you're not going to drag it across all of this. You really only want to 
take it across the darkest parts of the gray as to accent the gray but before we do the black on there we're going to start on the next ex exercise and that's just to avoid switching colors all the time um, since we will be doing these if you do them you know both of them one after the other both one after the other and you practice this multiple times multiple sheets it will become easier for you to do both and you might actually use one on the other so the second exercise is to demonstrate how to use the line as a clear definition of a point and like I guess of a shape how to actually give something shape so <clears throat> what we want to make sure is that we keep a clean line and we have light to one side and fading off to the other side and again you could use this for a lot of stuff give yourself about four inches there and we're gonna fade from the middle here again a clear hard line and try to get no overspray on this side over here you're gonna want all your paint to land over there and again to do this you're gonna to want to keep your airbrush angled towards that side so that your air coming out of your airbrush can kind of pull the paint over to that side you don't want it to just you know push it everywhere so if you kind of keep it angled it helps and when you're working along the edge it helps to not pull back so far on the trigger only give it small amounts of paint so to work very fine on the sides but again you want to make a clear line and grade it that way and we will work on this next slide next, but first, this is one of the main things here. As you can see I'm still using the same fanning technique I only started off by kind of doing this going up and down as to create that smooth line there so as you can see I don't have much overspray or any overspray really on this side but there's a nice clear fade on that side on this side over here again we want to do the same thing a line like this with the clear shading coming off but you want to make sure you leave some white at the very end as this will be your highlight to indicate that there is a wave or something um, impeding the light you know so this would be like creating waves um, as such you know it's again this is very basics but you could use this to create lots of effects so again give yourself about four inches from there the same distance that you did up go to the side here and try to do that without getting any paint here near the edge but having a smooth transition to the left and there you go there you have it now if this was to be outlined like this this would kind of show waves you could use this to make boxes you could use this to make just about anything now we want to load up our black on our airbrush and we're going to add some darks to these uh, gradients here and uh, I'll show you how to do that all right once you have your black loaded up we're going to start off on this top exercise once again now again here you don't really have to have this clear line but here you do want to have this shading kind of as smooth as possible this is smooth but you want this one you know to really give that effect and you know if you're creating something big you really want it to be smooth you don't want it to just you know abruptly change if that's what you're going for you know if you're trying to make something round you don't want it to just you know stop right away so Again, we're going to start from the right, and like I said, you're going to quickly fan out as to just darken up some of these dark areas of gray. As you can see there, uh, there is black. There is a darker gray here, there is a lighter gray coming in, and somewhere in between there, there is a very good transition from the white paper towel to the black. Um, again, you don't want to have banding, you don't want to have lines going through this. This is kind of learning really to use your eye 
um, more than the airbrush itself. By this point, if you have practiced my other airbrush videos, if you have seen them, gone through them, um, doing stuff like this should be kind of a breeze. Uh, especially if you practice, if you've seen my uh, how to make lines and stuff videos, then you already know how to make a sharp crisp line, you know, something like this. So working from a little bit farther away, you should already feel a little more comfortable. So this here is basically how you get into shading there. If you want to make something smaller, you just got to use the same technique, just in a smaller area. And we'll come up with that in the next exercise I'm going to show you here in a minute. But first, let's get back to this one over here. Again, we want to do the same thing. Try not to get any overspray on this side over here, but try to have this blend off from one color to the other without having any banding or any clear indicator of where one color stops or one continues. And as you can see, I use that same technique, just very close and very small strokes. And there you can see that it goes from a very, very dark black to white. And there's not very any indicator of where I went from one color to the next. Again, do the same thing over here. And if you wanted, you could just practice this, you know, one after the other. But you do want to learn how to leave this white here so that eventually you can work without using any masking and stuff. That's where this... Uh, shading technique will come in handy later on uh, so you know this is good to learn you know get your gradients down this is good to learn you know master the gradients master the shading and start making them smaller and smaller we're now we're working with four inches maybe go to three maybe go to two and eventually get it down to one inch to where you could get it blended in between there without you know covering the white and without there being any indicator of where you went from one color to the next but let's finish this up and then we'll move on to the next exercise. All right, same thing again. Notice I'm keeping my airbrush at an angle here, so try not to get no overspray on this side. I know it feels funny being at an angle like this at first, but you will get used to it, especially if you really care about not getting that overspray. Um, it'll just become second nature. But, you know, practice this, practice it a lot. Once you get really comfortable doing these, this next exercise is something you could really take and uh, use it to define what kind of art you're going to be doing. All right, for this next exercise, you remember that piece of construction paper I mentioned? Or any kind of cardboard, like light cardboard paperwork? I like to use manila folders um, just because they're cheap and they're pretty much thick enough for paint not to go through. Um, <clears throat> you want to take one of these. And you can either use a roll of tape, you know, and trace out the inside of the circle here. Or you could use, you know, a spray can, use the bottom, and trace out the circle there. And then you're going to want to cut that out. You're going to end up with a nice, clean circle like this. And uh, this is what we're going to use as our template for our next exercise here. So we're going to, again, take some little bit of spray adhesive, just spray it around the circle. You don't really got to cover this whole thing here. Just quick simple spray it on and again we're gonna go back to the gray and the trick here is to try to get the circle to look like a sphere okay this is a circle if you give it shading and you make it look round it becomes a sphere okay so there's a few things to realize here one you're gonna probably want to mark off a couple things and uh, the reason I have you cut this out is because it's good for overspray. Don't get any overspray in the back and you don't have to worry about that um, if you have a mask. The second is you can make markings on the outside of this and you know, with, yeah, without having to worry about ruining your white paper that you're practicing on. So it gives you a clear indicator. One thing you always want to do is mark off your light. Say if you have a light here hanging in an imaginary wall back here right 
this light is going to be emitting light this way. The things to remember about a sphere is that light will bend around the sphere and it'll actually bounce off the ground like if this was standing on something here and it'll light up a little bit of the back of the circle here. So <clears throat> what you're going to want to do is mark off about like that area there. So you have a reminder that you know that this area here has to have a little bit of lightness to it. It doesn't have to be white, but it doesn't have to be black, okay? Because this is actually a defining factor of a sphere. And if you don't have this in there, you won't actually get that quite roundness that you're looking for. You also might want to mark off kind of a halfway point. And I put these at an angle like this uh, because and it would be the halfway point between where the light is and where your other side is. Um, and you put these at an angle here because this is going to be your main band of shadow here. Uh, going from this line to that line in a circular kind of motion here. Um, <clears throat> so the trick again is to try to make it look round. And I want you to practice this. I'm going to kind of go through this. And, um, It'll probably be sped up for the video, but at the end I will show you the results and I'll show you kind of what I mean. So anyway, keep on watching and I'll show you what happens. Okay, so what you can see here is I've kind of created a light effect going around where the light is coming from. And so this area over here, as you can kind of see, it's not filled in with gray. Um, so now we're going to switch over to our black and we're going to add the, the dark shadows coming in here. And then we're going to remove our mask and discuss this a little farther. So once you have your black loaded up, it's a reminder, again, this is not supposed to be black. Okay, just because the light is on this side doesn't mean that the whole thing is black. Okay. When you look at the moon at night, just because this side is lit up does not mean you cannot see the other side. If you look closely enough, you will see the outline of the rest of the moon. You know, so even in space, light travels around objects. So <clears throat> you got to remember this and you got to try to apply it so that when you do paint something other than a sphere, you do remember that, you know, it's not always dark on the other side there is light so again I'm come in here I'm just gonna kind of darken up these areas here and connect it in the middle nothing is hard no hard lines try to keep it smooth and crisp all right so there you go there's the finished product. Um, again, you get get creative with this as far as you want. This is a quick little exercise. Again, this is, I did this pretty quick for you guys so that you guys can see. Uh, so this one's not extremely perfect, but it is just give you the good effect. It's round. It's there. You know, I've added shadows to make it look like it's on a plane here, and you know, it's a pretty good little exercise, especially you know, given the mask and everything. This is pretty nice. You want to practice this, get them as round as possible, as nice as possible. You could add in a white highlight, you could add gleams, you know, shimmers and stuff. You can make it look like it's shiny. But pretty much you want to get the basic down first. Uh, start off with your shading, you know, start off with your making sure you don't get, you know, overspray. Do the circle, do the sphere, and then if you get comfortable enough, try to do this without the mask. Try to do it without getting any overspray around. And, you know, if you're able to do that, then you probably got the airbrush pretty much down. And from there, we'll only have to talk about colors and stuff like that. But I will have more exercises coming for you guys that want to learn that maybe, you know, might have a little bit more trouble with this. Um, you know, they're coming. So if you have any questions, post them down in the comments. Um, if you like the video, hit that like button. If you dislike the video hit the dislike button helps me out either way um, if you want to see up more videos please subscribe and thanks for watching we'll see you guys in the next video